I definitely need to polish up on my docking skills, that's for sure. I have a lot to learn there. This is a big boat, man. It's, uh, it's a lot to handle coming into the marina, but luckily we had some help. It's always nice to have a hand on the, on the dock side to throw the line to. So either way, we got it in there and that's what matters, so check it out. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. What a beautiful day today. What do you think, baby? Should we take it out? Um, yep, waiting. <laughs> Chicken. I know, right? Oh, uh, I think it's windy now. See the wind? Think it's too windy for us? Yeah. Out of our skill set? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll have to see. Thinking about it. See what it's like when we get to our boat. the waves. Are you scared also? Not scared of the waves. Hi guys. Hi guys. Welcome, Welcome back. back. So anyways, new beautiful light bases installed. Yep, we're going to show you some new light bases getting installed. Those are really looking beautiful. It's positive. It's We're really happy with those. Yep, and then lots of beautiful tick trim and working with tick colored epoxy. Yeah, so we're going to show you that the uh, teak trim we're working with and some of our techniques trying to bond all that together and on the joints we're attempting to use teak colored epoxy which is a blend of epoxy, teak sawdust and a little bit of plywood sawdust mixed in with it and if you mix it just right you get the shade you're looking for it turns out really good you can't see the seam can't see the gaps or anything like that it, it fares right in looks good okay yep what else sunny Oh, and I'm just saying, working with that really makes a mess. Bonding those two pieces of uh, teak trim together was, it was fun, but it was messy at the same time. So we had a few setbacks with that. We'll talk about that in the video as, as well. So you get to see our, our uh, gains and losses on that. Yeah, but lots of nice steps forward oh, yeah. with our new teak trim fittings. Yep, yeah, it's looking good. I mean, we have more steps forward than steps going backwards. So we're in the right direction. Yep. Always got to have the positive spin on yeah. it right and then the rebuilt hatch trim installed yes yeah, so we'll show you that as well and that's just putting something back together that was taken apart which we like putting things back together yep so everything is coming together yep so talk about a little bit of it later all right see you in a little bit we'll see you in a little bit okay okay all right we got to measure this because we're going to put a piece of trim here All right, it's roughly about six inches. Okay. And we got a piece marked out right here. Go back here and we'll prepare to cut that. Right here on this fine little chop saw. All right, we'll go ahead and get set up for that.
nice clean cut pretty smooth even though the saw is horrible that's what we got so we wanted about that much six inches oh, that's what we got <laughs> and so you can see on this end here i used tape i taped over this before i did the cut and see it's nice and clean there's no tear out perfect no tear out on the end here But, as you can see on this end here, I didn't use any tape when I did the cut, and now I have tear out. See, it's not, not smooth or clean, but that's okay. Uh, we won't see that anyways because of where the trim's going to go, but still, uh, it'd be nice to avoid having things turn out like that in the future, so. We'll just keep that in mind, and uh, so where this is going to actually go, be right up in here, be right up in there, just like that. I think that looks pretty nice. I was debating on whether to use a bigger piece, but. I'm kind of kind of liking the look of that. So I don't know, we'll think about it a little bit and then we'll make a decision, but for right now I kind of I kind of like this size. Um I'll show you what I'm talking about. So see, we have this this bigger piece of angle teak right here I think we're gonna use this piece right here I kind of like it it does the job really well this here this would look alright also I don't really feel the need to cut another piece and this is full length still so maybe we'll just leave this and we'll go with this piece here. Since we already have it, and it, it came right off the end of the piece that we cut the other piece to length perfectly, so I think we're just gonna go with this. That's gonna be the decision. Okay, so what we did with these two pieces of teak trim, we're trying to make them into one. We epoxied these two pieces together and then uh, added some screws. And these are going to be the same uh, holes that locate this up to the overhead structure. And we'll show that in a little bit. But for now I just kind of wanted to show you how, uh, how we got these two pieces together. And it's still curing, uh, but it's, um, it's mostly cured. It's cured well, well enough for us to go ahead and work with it. But it, it'll continue to harden and set up over probably the next day or so. And the material we use to epoxy the, these two pieces together is... Uh, West system epoxy and it works out really well. We use the 105 resin with the 206 hardener and then we use some West system 406 silica and that's a, a thickener helps bond everything together real well and so when you put that in between these two layers it will help um, well fill any voids or gaps or anything like that it just provides just a stronger bond so uh, when you're epoxying wood together, two surfaces of wood together, you want to go ahead and wet them both out with epoxy and let it sit for a little bit before you join the pieces together. Uh, just because the wood will absorb some of the epoxy resin and you don't want to have like a dry bond because that's not going to do you any good. It'll just, uh, I've had that happen before and it just, it looks good from the outside but it doesn't hold and it'll, it'll break off later at some point when you don't want it to. So one of the next things we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to remove these uh, screws here. And I'll get some longer ones now because you'll see these, these screws are just barely poking through on the backside now. We'll get some longer stainless screws and then we'll go ahead and get ready to uh, start attaching this up onto the overhead structure, which is, it's gonna go, it's gonna go right back here and continue on aft. 
uh, just like we did earlier with this other trim here. So we'll just continue aft and finish, finish this out and then we can get ready to start locating the bigger piece of uh, trim, teak trim that we really want to be putting on here. So anyway, it's just a series of steps that we have to do to get to the end product and uh, we'll just keep going. I put these pieces of tape with the little marks on them just so that I know not to put any screws there. So it's just for me to see what's going on. But anyways, I'll pull them here in a little bit once we get everything all drilled up and located. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting this done. And then uh, once we have everything all on here the way we want it, we'll finish varnishing everything and then we can finally pull the tape and we'll eventually be mounting a light up in here also, a galley light, so. Anyways, it's all, it's all part of the fun. Just a ton of steps to get to the end product, but uh, once we get there, it will be worth it. That's the end goal we're looking, we're working towards, so. Anyways. All right, so we'll go ahead and pull these screws out. It's always nice to have a bunch of extra fasteners of different sizes and lengths to uh, have for projects like this because you never know you're going to need something oddball size or length or whatever but so here we go so now you can see these two pieces are going to be permanently joined together now which is a good thing so we'll go ahead and get some longer length uh, those were number six diameters we're going to go up to number eight diameter screws now this is to be a little bit bigger uh, a little bit bigger diameter so this is the number six right here we're going up to number eight and then we'll also go longer so we'll get i think it's going to go a bit we're going to go an inch long so i'll have to go get some of those and then uh we'll go ahead and start mounting this up on there so so one of the other things we need to do i forgot to mention is we'll need to uh not only are we going to go up larger screw but we're going to also going to need to countersink these because there's going to be a piece of trim mounting on the outside outside of these and we don't want the screw heads to be sticking up. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use a uh, this countersink bit here. So and we'll just go down a little deep but not bad. Just enough to where the head of the screw will not be sit, uh you know, it'll be flush. So that's what we're looking for countersink these down a little bit that's it that's all we need to do on those so that will allow the screw heads to sit flush and we won't have any interference problems so the boards the teak boards that we're going to final final trim piece we're going to put on there won't be it'll be sitting nice and tight that's what we're looking for all right so we'll go ahead and get those screws all right, well, here they are, right here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run those down. We'll do a test fit on them. And so there you go, nice and flush. It's actually a little bit recessed, but it's not going to be a problem. We just want to make sure it's not going to be sticking proud of the surface. Okay, that one's good. Same with that one and the final one. All right, now you'll be able to see the reason we went with a longer screw is now we actually have some, some threads showing on this end here. And those threads are gonna go into the structure up on the overhead there that we're working on. And we got, it looks, looks like we're gonna have about four to five solid threads coming through, which is gonna be enough to hold this in place. This isn't gonna be the final mounting fasteners. This will just hold the trim in place, but then we have some longer screws 
that we're going to put in place to hold everything all together and that's going to be these ones right here so these ones are considerably longer and they'll go through all layers plus into the structure about say eight threads or so we'll go ahead and pull these screws out now and get ready to mount this up on the overhead structure all right so we'll get everything get everything in place the way we need it so we can start putting screws in all right here we go we'll go ahead and check fit real quick better fit Okay, we got some epoxy. I'll have to do a little bit of rework. We'll get back to this. A few moments later. All right, we'll try this again. We had to, uh, well, I'll show you up here. We had to trim a little bit off of this end right here because it was, uh, Riding up against this on the install, so let's see. There we go. There we go. Now there's a good fit. So we'll get the uh, trusty little awl here and we'll locate one of our holes and go ahead and put a screw in. All right, so I don't know if that angle really shows you a very good what's going on, so we'll try a different angle here. Maybe that'll work better, so you, can, so you guys can see what I'm doing here. But anyways, yeah, so we went ahead and trimmed that down just a little bit to get it to fit good. Now we have a good fit, and so we'll go ahead and put the rest of our locating screws in, just to make sure everything's good. These are really handy because they're nice for locating your holes. Okay, so that's that, that's on. And that's just a continuation of this trim right here. So it's not made to be structural. All it is is really just to make sure that we get the right spacing. I want about a half inch shelf up here, just like uh, we have on the other side over here. So anyways, we have that now and so now we're gonna uh trying to remember what we're doing next year so we'll figure it out oh yeah so the next thing we're gonna do is we gotta figure out i'll show you we gotta figure out what kind of a what kind of a cut we're gonna put back here because uh, you can see the lines on the tape here. Obviously, this is going to hit right there, and we don't want we don't want that to contact. Um, so I'm just debating on those two types of cuts right there. I'm thinking about going with the rounded one. I just think it'll look better. So, and then at some point we'll have to relocate this captain's quarters sign because I don't think it's supposed to mount on this piece of trim it's actually supposed to be on the door so we'll, re we'll relocate that at some point all right we're gonna keep going along here okay well part of the problem I have today is I forgot my jigsaw I left that at home I need that to cut this and then I want to round, I want to do some kind of a round shape to this. So, you know, I was going to, I was thinking about doing the angle cut, but I want to put something a little bit different on it. So it looks a little, I don't know, just a little unique, but not cheap looking. I want it to look nice. So I'm thinking about doing this and then doing a little swoopy curve on here. Or bring the, uh, bring the jigsaw next time we come back which is probably more likely that's what will happen I'll just bring the jigsaw next time but so anyways we're still 
still trying to figure out what kind of look we're looking for here but I'm thinking maybe this or something just to kind of like there was some detail put into it it's all about the details anyway so we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'm not gonna video it I think everybody knows what it looks like when a skill saw is cutting wood so um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the cordless skill saw I'll do the long cut with that and then I'll use the uh, multi-tool for the uh, vertical cut we'll get that done and then we'll see what it looks like when we're up there and these are gonna be I don't know we'll see maybe we'll just cut it right on the line get that cut out of the way it'll probably turn out nicer with the skill saw anyways if not we can always buy more wood all right so with a combination of using the skill saw here did a little small cut to get it started going this way and then also did a cut to get it going lengthwise until I got it to about there and then stopped and then the cleanup the cleanup cuts I did with the multi-tool just got in there and took it to like right there it stopped same thing here cleaned it up a little bit that way stopped and that's where we're at so we still have enough room to figure out what we're going to do with these what kind of finish cut we're going to put on it here but for right now this will allow us to continue forward and finish getting this piece fit up into place and we'll start working on getting this trim located drill up drill up the holes and locate it okay so what we're working on doing now is we're working on joining these two pieces together here i have a you call it a scarf joint i have that there um the one thing i have a problem with is these two pieces of wood were milled at the same time at the same location but as you can see here we have a little bit of a we have a little bit of a lip here on this so they're not exactly the same width which is not my favorite um, I was hoping they would be but for some reason they're not I'd rather put that on the top side than on the bottom side because when you're looking like this you're not going to see the top side as easily as you will see the bottom side so I'm putting it up on the top I will try to sand it in and blend it a little bit but it's not going to come out perfect so I'm going to put it on the top and we'll leave it for now and then what we're doing now is we're going to get ready to epoxy these two joints together and I'll show you what we got going on there with the epoxy so what I did is I've done this before and it turns out really good is I've taken I've taken some uh, some of the the West epoxy the 105 resin and I've mixed in with it some teak sawdust and a little bit of regular plywood sawdust to kind of lighten it up a little bit because uh, when I use all teak sawdust it gets really dark and then you can kind of see the you can see the filler in it really really well but if you look right here this is a pretty good match and uh, all we're going to do with this this uh, epoxy is we're going to put it on this joint here inside here and just to join these two pieces together but we want to have the epoxy fill in any kind of gaps or whatever we might have also as well so you see right there so I put a little bit of sawdust in there with the resin and the filler the silica fill filler mixed them together and that's what we have so now we're just going to add the hardener and then we're going to go ahead and start getting this ready to join together i have a couple of little tools here to aid me in keeping this uh square so i have this little tool right here that i made it's not perfect but it's going to help get me real close fast and then we can clamp it start clamping everything up uh the plastic is for so the epoxy will not stick to the clamps and the wood that I have on the back side bracing all of this together. I'll put the, I'll put the plastic because the epoxy and the plastic won't stick together. So it, it's going to keep everything from sticking to the stuff I don't want it to. I'll, show you, I'll just show you what we have. So what we're doing to kind of clamp all this together. Now maybe it'll make a little bit more sense what we got going on. So all right. That's just going to be on the bottom side, just kind of stiffen things up, help everything keep its form, stay nice and even, and we'll glue this. All we're working to do is bond these two joints together, so that's all we're trying to do. And keep it 
in parallel, all right? So go ahead and put all this together and then we'll come back and show you what we got going on. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add the hardener. So we're just gonna mix it up really good. I'm not sure, maybe we might wanna go a little bit thicker. I think I'll add just a little bit more uh, silica to this. That way it'll thicken it up. I didn't add a lot, I just added like a, maybe a spoonful. And uh, we'll go ahead and mix that up, see? So that's kind of what it looks like right there. And we're just gonna keep stirring it, make sure it's mixed really well. Then once we're happy with the mixture, we'll start spreading it on both surfaces of wood. And it's important, it's important to put it on both surfaces because you don't want a dry joint because it's not gonna bond. It, it won't bond very well, it won't be very strong. And then we'll just start spreading it on here. We don't want to put too much on because it just makes more work for us in the end after this all sets up. Lots of sanding and trying to remove all the excess epoxy is not easy, so you don't want to go too heavy. All right, so we're back in business. Uh, the battery died on the camera, so we'll try it again here. Basically what we're doing is just making sure we don't have too much epoxy down here. We want squeeze out, but we don't want a ton of it either at the same time. Because too much just means lots of sanding. But there's a balance because not enough will mean it's not a good joint. And then we won't get a good bond and then it won't be strong. And it'll probably break when we're trying to install it. So let's see how this does here. No matter what, it's gonna be messy. I think the color of the filler is just about perfect. The sawdust combination uh, silica fillers, I think that's just about perfect. We couldn't, couldn't ask for better than that. So we're happy with that. So now, Now what we're gonna do is start clamping the, the wood up here that's kind of helping double it up. We're a little more comfortable with how everything's lining up real good. So we're gonna start clamping things down a little more. Oh man. Trying to minimize the sanding that's going to be required down the road as much as possible. We know we're going to have sanding, but we don't like to minimize it. So far, so good. It's such a long piece of wood that I just want it to line up as best as we can get it. That's all I'm trying to do. Let's see here. What do we have for squareness? I 
I think we're pretty close. Okay, so here we are. Everything's all clamped up. We're just gonna let this cure. See what happens. Come back and check a little bit later. We got pressure holding it down right over the right over the joint. We got pressure downward on that. And we got pressure with these clamps holding everything so that the boards are in a line with each other. And then we squared it up on this bottom edge here. And I think that's about all we can ask for right now. We're just gonna go ahead and go ahead and let it cure. So I don't know if anybody's ever tried color matching the uh epoxy before to match their teak or whatever wood project they're working on but i got the idea off watching sale life uh mads was doing it on one of his projects so i figured i'm going to remember that for the time when we need it and this is one of those perfect times for trying it out and i'll tell you we got the color just about right mixing a little bit of plywood sawdust in with the teak sawdust keeps it from getting too dark and i think we color matched it real well so we're happy with how it's turned out and the result is fabulous as far as we're concerned and this is going to work for the job we're using it for so if you got any questions or if you have any ideas on how to do that or if this is a idea you've used before in the past let us know so if you take a look in this picture here you'll see we've added lots of beautiful teak in our boat we have the teak trim strips that are going down the uh, vinyl seams there on the overhead we have the teak hatch frame put back in place for the newly rebuilt overhead hatch that we put in and then we have a couple of new light bases the uh, large oval teak bases those are really cool they're very beautiful those uh, took a lot of time to figure out design and make and we're really happy with those it's very thick solid teak and then we also have the new square ones as well and so basically what we're doing right now is we're just doing a test fit of all this stuff and then we got to figure out how we're going to wire up our new lighting and all those other neat features. And finally, you can see that we have that new piece of teak trim that we made and epoxy the two pieces together to get it to double up the thickness. We have that now installed on the aft portion of the galley overhead teak box. And then you see that nice, beautiful, varnished teak light base box that's also in there. We've got a lot done. These are all a little small very labor intensive details but they take a long time to get done and in the end it's going to be very beautiful and as always we're working towards that thing of beauty status we're getting there slowly but surely stick with us and you'll see our beautiful transformation of this boat if you made it this far into the video we just want to say thank you we know this one was a little bit long on the details and stuff like that but that's what it takes to get these little projects done some of them take a long time a lot of steps going into making this a thing of beauty. All right, so, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna wrap this up. After a few setbacks, we managed to learn our way forward on some of this bonding with colored epoxy. We did that pretty well. We got the hatch installed. We got a couple of nice, beautiful teak light bases installed. The galley overhead teak box assembly project has come along really good. We showed you guys a little bit of how we put it together, some of the assembly process some of the teak plywood panels going on. The idea is definitely heading in the right direction. We're really happy with it. We're definitely gonna run with this. Uh, we hope you guys like it as well. Any input on that, on what we could do differently or some modifications down the road, we really appreciate that as well. We're good with it all and it's all just part of being a boat owner and a project boat owner as well. So we're trying to do both, we'll get it. All right, so let's wrap this up. Yeah, wrap it up. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. If you are not subscribed yet, please, please subscribe, subscribe down, down below. below. Bye. 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 All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's right down here somewhere. So we All really right. appreciate if you hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. We appreciate each and every one of our new and longtime subscribers. Thank you for being along with us on this crazy up and down journey. But we are working forward a little bit each and every time. So thank you so much. All right, so we'll see you guys next video. Yep, we'll see you. Have a good one. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Dang, if I only hit record. Man. I think you did. Okay. <laughs>
I'm Priscilla. I'm by myself. <laughs> Doing this project alone. Dang. Finally, I, I don't think I hit record. Man. I think you did. <laughs> did I? Yeah. Okay. Oh, dang. I think I forgot to hit record. <laughs> like always. Oh man, is it recording? No. I think you did, or maybe not. <laughs> did we record it? Hang on, no, 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 no. <laughs>